we've got a few people in the waiting room, so I will just let them in. But it looks like we've got people joining us, so that's absolutely awesome. I'll give everybody a a few moments to to join us and get uh, and get comfortable. Um, so hello everybody thank you for, for joining us today um for the Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute architecture accepted student webinar we appreciate you um giving your time this afternoon and joining us today hopefully we're going to make this a, a nice productive use of time as we learn a little bit more about the architecture program at RPI um just letting you know we are recording this uh webinar so that we can put it on our RPI admissions YouTube channel so the students that can't make it today will be able to uh, view this at a later time. Uh, we are honoured to be joined today by Dean Evan Douglas, um, the Dean of the School of Architecture. Hi Evan, how you doing? Uh, you're, you're muted right now Evan. Uh, Matt, I'm doing well, looking forward to uh, <laughs> uh, sharing a lot of information with prospective students. Excellent. And um, so Evan will be giving a, an academic overview of the uh, the program. We'll then pause for some questions and answers. Then we have uh, a panel of students who will be joining us, current RPI architecture students. who are going to tell you a little bit about themselves. And then again, we can dive straight into questions then. Um, when it comes to the time to ask questions, please use the chat box. Um, I will feed the questions uh, to uh, Evan and our students, and I know we already have some questions that were sent in advance, and at some point over the course of the next hour or so, we will be um, hopefully getting to answer those. Um, please keep your cameras off um, during the presentation. Please keep your microphones muted. I see there's a couple of people that are unmuted right now. Um, but just so that we get a good quality recording that we can put on our awesome YouTube channel, that would be um, that would be handy for for keeping a, um, a really good quality recording that people can check out later on. So, without any uh, further ado, I'm going to hand over to the Dean of the School of Architecture, Evan Douglas. Hey, Matt. Thank you. Uh, before I uh, share my uh, uh, PowerPoint uh, with everyone here. This afternoon, I just want to welcome everyone. Uh, I mean, ideally, we'd be doing this in person, but um, we have a number of prospective students, uh, accepted students who are all over the country. And for a lot of obvious reasons, they're unable to get on campus. So uh, thank God for technology. Uh, you know, this is a, a wonderful opportunity for you to hear from me as the dean um, and also from our students. And, uh, you know, my presentation may go for, oh, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes and we can stop and feel free to ask any questions. I mean, I know this is a, a really important decision uh, in your life uh, to pick a school that um, uh, challenges you and inspires you and is as at the cutting edge uh, in terms of uh, looking at current uh, technology and best practices uh, so in order to prepare you to go out and become a, a terrific practitioner, right? But also a leader in the profession. So um, we're here at RPI. Uh, we provide you a broad range of, of knowledge uh, that allows you to go out not only to get a job, and this is really important. I mean, uh, I, that's low hanging fruit, right? Just to get a degree and be employed. Uh, I challenge my students to think outside the box and take risks and 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 design their future uh, and uh, consider from one semester, one year to the next, um, what their priorities are and 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 how do they become, uh, let's say, uh, more confident, more independent, um, more excited about uh, teaching and learning, um, and at the proper time, you know, uh, identify firms around the world that you think would be exciting to work for um, and would enable you to reach your potential. So uh, there's a lot on, on that subject. All right, so I'm going to start the presentation. There's a series of slides here. And 
I hope everyone can see that. Let's see here. Uh, enter full screen. Okay. So this is um, yours truly on the uh, front of our green building at, at RPI. And this is uh, the entire school comprised of uh, students, faculty, and staff. Um, and I think the takeaway here is that we've got a family. You know, I, I know the transition from from high school to college can sometimes be daunting and uh, very unfamiliar, but I can assure you it's one of the most exciting uh, moments in your life, quite honestly. And there's an extraordinary uh, community of uh, uh, students and faculty from around the world. And you'll find uh, that uh, you'll make friends in, in a matter of hours and days upon arrival. And some of these people you'll be in touch uh, with for the rest of your life. Some of them you may even decide to start a firm with. Uh, the faculty are uh, seasoned veterans. They take uh, uh, their responsibility as educators very seriously. Um, again, it's not only uh, about preparing you to become a professional architect, but but uh, if you're educating a young person, uh, you recognize that uh, you do have a significant responsibility to provide them with uh, confidence, um, to make them think uh, and to work independently, uh, to feel comfortable about making a lot of mistakes and learning from those mistakes. All the students uh, coming in in the freshman class are assigned an upperclassman, male or female mentor. So you've got someone 24 seven uh, to reach out to in, in case you're a little bit uh, oh, anxious, uh, a little, you need some clarity on a particular uh, oh, exercise in school. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's an extraordinary group of people. I also have a number of faculty that feel so strongly about the school that they they live in New York City, but they um, commute twice a week. That's two and a half hours uh, each way to come up and teach at our school. They feel that strongly. They, you know, as you must know or not, there are a number of architecture schools in New York City as well. Uh, some of them uh, I was uh, I used to teach at, and I was administrative leader. Um, and I brought all my great uh, faculty from New York City, brought them upstate. And so I think that's pretty cool. It it certainly affirms the fact that that uh, that community is about a culture, a culture of respect, a, a culture of creative exploration, uh, a culture of learning. And uh, you become a, you know, once you enter into School of Architecture at Rensselaer, uh, you're part, not only during the time you're part of the family, but even after you leave RPI with a degree, um, we have a very, very strong connection with our alum. And so that's very exciting. Okay. Um, so preparing future leaders, you know, you'll, you'll hear me say this on a number of occasions, right? Uh, when I went to architecture school out of out of high school, I you know I I didn't know a lot about architecture at the time, and uh, and there was a lot of unknowns and a lot of boxes that had to be checked, and I it, I certainly wasn't thinking about the bigger picture. That is to say, well, uh, by going to architecture school, um, what does it afford me? How does it uh, transform transform me as a as a as a person? as a human being and and um, uh, beyond getting that degree and getting a job afterwards, is there something more important? And the answer is yes. And certainly in architecture, it's a really incredible discipline uh, profession because uh, it has a an extraordinary impact on the world, right? Um, I'm sure all of you know that uh, there's an existential crisis in the world uh, around climate change. Uh, and it's real. And uh, the built environment uh, plays a significant role uh, in terms of either perpetuating it, making it worse, or uh, coming up with a solution. And so how cool is it to be able to go to enter into a, 
a profession uh, called architecture know that there is a collective uh, agenda on the part of professional architects and emerging architects in schools around the world that need to take on questions of sustainability uh, and need to uh, take a leadership role when it comes to rescuing a, a vulnerable planet. Um, so there, there are a lot of things that, that architecture uh, uh, offers for uh, you as, as, the, as the kind of driving force and as a single entity, but you're, you're part of a larger kind of collective agenda. And so the term I would use, it's, is, it's a bit of a calling, you know? I figured this out much later in my life, uh, but uh, within the first you know, year or two years of my undergraduate program, I realized, wow, there's something more profound here. And I, you know, I wasn't really aware of that, certainly before I went to college. Um, and I just, I should underscore the fact that we don't expect uh, our students to know much about architecture when they come in. Uh, in fact, 95% of the students have uh, know very little about architecture, and that's totally fine. The 5% are those that have taken a career discovery, entered into a career discovery program. It's a two week uh, uh, academic immersion experience. Some of you may have done it, I don't know. Um, and in those two weeks, uh, it's a kind of uh, initiation into architecture. Many of the students who enter into that program apply to our school and, and some of them get in and some of them uh, actually enroll. But the reason why I say this is because that's our responsibility to, to teach you uh, how to move an abstract idea into a drawing, uh, into a model, uh, how to um, apply your understanding of structures and energy analysis uh, to the design of buildings and how buildings relate to a, to a uh, urban or a rural landscape, right? How are buildings put together as a kit of parts? All that stuff, right? Software, an incredible amount of opportunity today <clears throat> when it comes to software, <clears throat> being able to essentially create things uh, uh, in a virtual world we one was never able to do before. So it's a great time to enter into architecture. And then, you know, you send the file online and uh, it gets 3D printed in our shop. Come back the next day and you have your, the building you design, you've been working on for a couple of weeks and you have a three dimensional object you can pick up, right? 3D, 3D print. Um, so lots of things that um, are taking place in the school that are exciting. So. You know, back to this uh, this issue of the vulnerable planet uh, responding to climate change. And uh, architecture is a combination uh, of being, it's a social and environmental project. Um, social uh, in the sense that it affects people's lives, right? If you design a beautiful building, uh, you're not at the front door telling people how to feel when they walk into that great building, but uh, they do experience something. And in the best of cases, it resonates with them uh, and it changes their whole kind of psychological and almost spiritual relation to the world. So, right, architecture is operating on a variety of levels simultaneously. It's art, it's science, it's engineering, it's technology, it's ethics, right? Um, and so that that's really, really exciting. Uh, to know that uh, when you design a building and it's usually a collaborative project and you hand it off uh, right to an anonymous group of people, whether it's a museum or a housing complex or a disaster relief structure or an airport or a hotel, it goes on and on and on. Um, uh, it will have an impact. You move on to another uh, commission and this, this building is having a kind of dialogue with the environment, uh, with the depletion of our energy resources. Could buildings be more intelligent? And the answer is yes. I'll talk more about that. Um, but it's also an ethical, it's an ethical project, right? Uh, you're giving something back to the world that resonates uh, uh, with others. And I use this term, the next planetary strategy. I know that's a, wow, that's like a scale of a science fiction film, right? Could a single building 
actually have cascading effects? And the answer is yes. I mean, there's always, uh, from one moment to the next in history, there are individuals and groups of people who come up with something that's innovative and uh, it has a profound impact to the, sense, to the extent that um, it literally may change an entire discipline, an entire profession, uh, and the human species, right? So, I mean, I show this image. It's kind of interesting. When I was going to school, you didn't see a hybrid between uh, uh, artificial and natural materials, but uh, uh, today, there's an extraordinary amount of work uh, taking place in research labs around the world that are trying to figure out how not just plants and buildings can connect, but the buildings components themselves could be redesigned in such a way that they could change in real time. So that's pretty, that's pretty cool. And then, um, you know, last but not least, uh, making a difference in your lifetime. You know, as a, as I'm an architect and an educator, and I'm an administrative leader of an entire school of architecture and have been for about 14 years. And I know that, um, that the school uh, is having uh, an effect on, on the next generation of architects. And so the project of education, for instance, uh, is something, it's a noble endeavor. Um, that an architecture is a noble endeavor, right? So once again, I'm, I'm raising the bar here and I know I haven't gone into great specificity, which I'll, I'll move towards as the presentation moves forward. But I just, I wanted to, you know, speak to you in terms of the big picture. You know, here you are gravitating towards something that intuitively you feel like this could be exciting and it is. You're also gravitating towards something that is just, so extraordinary in terms of all the people you'll meet, in terms of all the disciplines that are interconnected. It's a highly interdisciplinary field. Uh, you're moving towards a profession that's ambitious um, and it operates at a variety of scales and it, and it, uh, it takes place from you know, the size of an interior to a building, to a university campus, to a city. And, it, and, you know, architecture may be 30 minutes from your house. Uh, it's, all, it's also, you know, all the way across the country and for that matter, around the planet. Mm -hmm. And on that note, you'll, it's really important uh, to realize that you're, you're a global citizen because you will be getting commissions all over the world, right? Um, Yeah, and these are just images. They're they're intended to kind of provoke you, and and they're they they've got uh, their signification in the images, right? Whether we're talking about uh, parks or elevated uh, a, a train rail, or the idea of public space, uh, and the idea of community, right? Um, and how do you? This is you know this was a purposely designed page, I wanted to contrast the fact that often architects will create drawings <laughs> and uh, those drawings can be entirely theoretical uh, and projective in the sense they're, they're, they're looking into the future. And uh, interesting enough, which is, you know, it happens throughout the history of the world. Sometimes you dream the future and it becomes real. Right. So uh, when I was going to uh, school, we had just landed on the moon and the idea of landing on Mars was just found in science fiction films. And yet fast forward today, we've got a robot, a rover on Mars where there's real footage coming back to NASA on a continuous uh, basis, letting us know what this extreme planet looks like. Uh, there, ha there has been such a transformation in terms of technology in the last 35, 40 years. Um, it's almost like you can't recognize the architecture and construction industry. I spoke about the software, uh, computers, uh, laser cutting machines, 3D printing, robotic technology. 
I mean, they're they're talking about 3D printing structures on the moon right now. And it's and it's a real project. And I know I actually know colleagues of mine that have put proposals to, together on that. So my goodness, the the era within which you're studying architecture uh, is so advanced and has so many opportunities available to you. Um, now I want to kind of pivot over to the the School of Architecture and what is uh, unique about our school, right? Um, we offer a superior education, and I think I think uh, knowledge is power. Uh, there's there's nothing more important at this moment in your life than to be open minded and receptive to learning and uh, interpret it as a journey. Um, and it's going to have, you know, it'll be, there'll be bumps in the road. You'll hit walls and you have to figure out how to go around that wall. It, it's not going to be easy. And, and that's okay. And that's okay. In fact, uh, you know, all the students in my school and, and I've got, you know, a little over 300, uh, many of them were in the same place you were, which is entering into your first year, your freshman year. And, and having a little amount of anxiety, will I be able to excel? Uh, is this the right career move for me? The teacher said something and I'm not entirely sure what they meant. And um, you just have to be patient and you just have to uh, recognize that again, your intuition brought you towards architecture and it'll take a matter of days, weeks, months, and sometimes even years to be able to figure it all out. Right. I can assure you within the first semester, uh, our students get very, very excited uh, about what they've learned and they've created some of the most amazing projects. Right. And and uh, and of course, they're part of that community I spoke to you about. Uh, but, you know, going to a great school of architecture like uh, uh, Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute is essentially maximizing your full creative and intellectual potential. And I feel strongly about that, that we, we have this potential and uh, some people, unfortunately, never get the opportunity to utilize it, right, uh, to be challenged. It's like a muscle. You got to work it from one day, week to the next. Um, so we've got this amazing program where we are challenging the students, again, to think outside the box. And we're providing them with exercises and skill sets. And there's lots of conversation and dialogue and their toys and equipment and tools to work with. And architecture, as I mentioned before, uh, it's a broad body of knowledge, right? From history to structures, to computation, uh, to ethics, uh, to law, to business, uh, to art, uh, to communication, to philosophy. I mean, I could go on and on and on. And do you have to be perfect in all those? No, we don't expect you to. You don't have to be exceptional in everything. Uh, architecture is a team sport. And when you move out into the professional world, you'll be working in teams. And everyone will essentially assume uh, a responsibility that uh, works really well with their skill set and experience. Uh, but while you're in school, you're being exposed uh, to a tremendous amount of information. And that's exciting. You know, it's like the analogy I use, it's like you jump out of an airplane and you're not sure the parachute is going to open, uh, but it always opens. Um, and again, we have that support system to help you through that. Um, I'm going to go back here. Um, I love the term elastic mind. What do I mean by that? Um, architecture is fundamentally different than it was when I went to school and it's changing all the time uh, because the world around us is changing. So uh, if you and will enter into a, a school of architecture this coming fall in three, four, five, ten 10 years, we're going to see uh, a whole kind of, kind of body of, of new tools 
and, and equipment and machines. Look at artificial intelligence, intelligence and machine learning. I mean, it's, it's absolutely extraordinary the amount of, of uh, computational intelligence that is now available associated with computers. That's gonna have a massive impact on, on our profession. <clears throat> and you have to have an elastic mind. What do I mean by that? You have to, it's, it's, it's like, uh, you know, you're an athlete and uh, someone hits the ball that you didn't expect it to come from that angle and you have to respond to it. Well, you have to be creative and you have to think outside the box. Um, and certainly as a leader, that's the kind of uh, individuals that will excel in the coming years ahead. So uh, I love that term because um, in a way it's, it's challenging our students to become independent and, and think for themselves and, and, and be uh, lifelong learners. Um, and don't, you know, it's not about taking the easy uh, route. Uh, sometimes taking the harder one might be a little difficult in the beginning. And all of a sudden it's like the window opens and you go, wow, this was the right thing to do. Right. Um, and, you know, the last line here, create your life journey. I, I, I actually believe uh, it's tougher when you're a little younger because you're you're going through so many rapid changes, especially from, from uh, high school to college. But I tell our students on a continuous basis, I say, you know, you're designing your life. You know, you can get any job, but why not get a job with an architecture firm that you respect? that you feel would be an exceptional mentor, that would ex, uh, extend your uh, educational experience beyond RPI uh, in, in the firms. And on that note, I should say that we have um, an extraordinary uh, career development network. We just had a job fair a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it was three days, two days on campus, maybe up to 35 firms came on campus, set up tables in our big open area in the building. And every student in the school had the opportunity to come in and show their portfolio, exchange business cards, and essentially open a conversation about the possibility of working at their office. They came to our school. So uh, if you're concerned, hey, will I get a job? Yeah, sure, you'll get a job. You'll You'll start getting internships uh, in the summer. And uh, by the time you leave after five years, you will have learned a lot on a pragmatic level about how the profession works and you'll have choices. Maybe some of these firms will uh, extend an offer for you to work with them. Uh, maybe you feel like you've maximized uh, the time in their office and you wanna try something different. Lots of opportunity, right, uh, to, balance your educational experience with a more pragmatic experience. Um, so I hear this question a lot. Uh, how is RPI different than other schools of architecture? Because some schools are more art oriented and some are more technology based. Um, I would uh, propose that our school is a combination of art, science and technology. It's not an either or proposition. Now, with that said, I do want to preface, I'm aware that uh, some of our prospective students uh, have, a, have had a lot of art courses and they feel very comfortable making with their hands, working with a lot of mediums, uh, expressing themselves in two and three dimensions. And, uh, and maybe science and, and math is a little bit less familiar, but they're good at it too, because if they weren't, they wouldn't have gotten into our program. And then there's another profile of students who, um, for a variety of reasons, maybe they didn't take a lot of art courses in their junior high school and high school, maybe because they weren't offered, maybe they didn't think this is something they would have been good at. And then as they got closer to their senior year, they decided, you know, I think I want to be an architect. And they had to figure out how to put a portfolio together. Um, and so they may be less familiar with, again, how to express themselves through a variety of mediums. And, and that particular individual, you know, may say, hey, can, am I going to be able to excel at your school? Because I don't know if I have a lot of skill sets in that area. And once again, my answer is, don't worry about it. 
don't worry about it. Uh, you were accepted in the program because of your academic achievement, um, because of uh, your creativity, and most important, because of your potential to succeed. We saw something remarkable in you, and uh, you were accepted into the program, and we'd be thrilled to have you uh, as part of the School of Architecture. So um, I wouldn't worry about that. But once again, we see architecture as a combination of, of art, science, and technology. And I think that's, that's really exciting because buildings can look good. Uh, they, can, they can be remarkably inspiring as you move through them. And they can be uh, technologically sophisticated in terms of their relationship to the natural world. So we do believe in promoting individual expression. Uh, each of you has a, 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 an enormous amount of creativity, whether you're aware of it or not. And, and that will come out as soon as you arrive uh, in the design studios. Um, we teach architecture as a form of integrated knowledge, right? And it, it may not start off that way because uh, when you first arrive, you're taking separate courses. Um, and some of them have some remote connection to each other, but as you move from first to second and third year, they start to interconnect. And all of a sudden you begin to realize that my structures course is informing my design studio strategies or uh, something about uh, history theory, uh, architecture uh, as a kind of, it, it reflects uh, a current civilization or society, right? Um, uh, buildings are like beautiful books. Uh, they have ideas associated with them that are of their time. Um, offering cutting edge digital design instruction. I mean, look at these images. Uh, you probably are thinking, well, oh, that must be fourth or fifth year. I'm pretty sure that uh, some of this work, most of this work, all three projects are probably in first and second year. Think about that. Right? Can you imagine the amount uh, of skills that you would have to acquire to be able to build a model three-dimensionally uh, on in a virtual environment on the computer, uh, assign it a scale to it, and uh, under interpret it as something that has a programmatic value, and then it's located in a particular site. Now, I sent uh, all the accepted students to our program. Uh, and I'm hoping all of you got an email from me uh, only what, 24, 48 hours ago. There's a link in the email where you can download our all school book. It's a 932 page book. So you may ask, so this is the kind of work you guys do at RPI. Yeah, but we do an enormous range of design exploration moving from something more straightforward and familiar like a box to something that's more contemporary and futuristic all right so i assure you after leaving our program in five years you will have all the skill sets and knowledge to be able to enter into any firm in the world right and start working right away but you will have an imagination and, and a, a kind of critical thinking perspective that will prepare you to take on any demand to, right? Schools of architecture should be playgrounds. They should be fun, they should be exciting, okay? Um, and you should be able to explore depending on what year you're in, what semester, what teacher you have, a whole range of different projects. Um, I speak, I, I've spoken to you at length about the kind of uh, software programs that, that we prepare you for. Um, it's really, really amazing what you can do in architecture school. And then of course it comes out as a three-dimensional object. So the second to last line here, superior fabrication platforms, uh, 3D printing, laser cutting is, is burning uh, a shape out of flat stock. And then you put a building together made out of planes. And then of course we have a robot that can do a whole range of work at 360 degrees. Um, and the last 
you know, line here, imagine buildings as smart and beautiful change agents, right? That's, isn't that cool? Uh, a building isn't an object uh, that doesn't have, you know, it's just an aesthetic object. As you've heard me throughout this presentation, it's, it's, it's a living thing. And, uh, and it's living in terms of how it affects people and society and culture and, and energy and light and resources. Um, and so, yeah, once again, it, it, how cool is it to make things like that? Um, so now making a, a, a slight transition, I'm getting a little bit more specific about another area um, that's important to our school that distinguishes Rensselaer School of Architecture from other schools of architecture. Now, most architects in the world, and I would imagine every school of architecture is aware of climate change and um, has a number of courses on sustainability. It's part of the, the ethos uh, of their program. But this is a very important statement. Uh, the architecture profession and the construction industry, they're two entirely distinct regimes, right? Architects typically do not design the building components that make buildings, right? You, you order a steel beam, uh, a, a concrete slab, um, skylights, um, uh, windows and doors and, and wood framing. This is, these are ready-made. They're manufactured around the world. You specify them and they get delivered to the site and you put the, your contractors put the building together. Well, the nice thing about being at RPI is we have, uh, we have an extraordinary um, resource in terms of engineering science. Having a school of architecture inside, inside a STEM institution is really an asset. It's an advantage. We do, there's a lot of interdisciplinary collaboration between our school and, and all the schools throughout RPI. We have three graduate research programs. So you're entering into the BARCH program, but you can take courses, you can get a minor, major, or even a second degree. We call it a co-terminal degree at any one of our three graduate research programs. And in no particular order, one is in architectural acoustics, sound, right? Can you design a building that has a certain sound to it? The transmission of sound is actually modified by the geometry of, of the interior of a building and the material that you assign on that interior space, like an opera house, right? Uh, we have one of the leading architectural acoustics programs in the world. We also have one of the leading lighting research centers in the world, and uh, they're looking at um, solid state lighting, LED lighting, uh, light and health, right? All the natural and, and artificial lighting that makes up a building, and it's critical, both the inside and the outside, is absolutely essential to the making of a great building. And our students in the BRH program again, can take courses in lighting, and some even get that second degree. And last but not least, we have a graduate research program called Built Ecologies. And in that program, we have CASE, the Center for Architecture, Science, and Ecology. It's the first, second line here. Um, the other two programs are uh, in this, on campus or in downtown Troy. CASE is actually in Brooklyn in New York City. And it's comprised of uh, graduate uh, students. And uh, they're looking at next generation building components and building systems. So whereas I started this conversation saying that architects typically have to use the current building systems that are in the market and, and maximize their energy efficiency, Case is saying, what's the next brick for the 21st century? And that's a really important question because the truth is that relatively speaking, if you were to compare the technology used to make contemporary buildings today with the technology you find in the military complex or the aerospace industry, NASA, 
it's it's um, obviously inferior. And this is a long discussion, but but the most important takeaway is uh, RPI doesn't accept that. RPI feels that the School of Architecture, it's really our responsibility and obligation to design that new brick. And um, here are two images of research that's come out of uh, case. The image on the right, these are solar tracking uh, lenses and they move in real time with the sun and they absorb energy from the sun and then move that energy into a chip into the kind of uh, brain of the building. And why is this important, this kind of research? Well, all buildings, contemporary buildings in the world are, are connected, right? There's a kind of uh, primary energy source in a city. Buildings should really be off the grid and independent like plants and animals. All right, and we're working on that project. The, the image on the left is a kind of eco-ceramic brick. Uh, and there's an enormous amount of science built into the relief of that geometric building unit and its angle in relation to sun. So it would take, it would be a much longer discussion to explain uh, why these are so interesting and radically valuable. Um, but I, I just want to point out that you have the opportunity, if you come to RPI, to spend a full semester at Case in New York City working with the graduate students. Um, and that puts you, I would argue, in a whole nother level than students that are studying at other schools of architecture around the world, okay? Uh, because there's a lot of deep science and engineering inside this research. And most schools of architecture are not collaborating with scientists and engineers. And they're not looking at the question, which is what's the next brick for the 21st century? So here's another topic and another area which I'm very proud of, uh, global citizenship, right? Um, most schools of architecture offer a study abroad uh, opportunity. I don't know of a school that has as many opportunities as we offer. So our students can spend a full semester abroad with a teacher connected to a host uh, school of architecture at the, in that country, and they can travel to look at contemporary and historic buildings. Our students go to, in no particular order, to Italy, India, China, Argentina, Chile, and we're opening a program in Japan. And so, there are life-changing uh, opportunities. I can't stress enough how transformative it's been for our students. 75% of the students entering into the fifth year uh, have had a cultural immersion experience at RPI. And you leave that, uh, uh, you know, that environment that you're so familiar with and you're now confronted with something that's extremely new uh, and etiquette, cuisine, architecture, uh, language, uh, cultural legacy of the place, it goes on and on and on. And um, I can honestly say that when the students come back, they're a different person. And they're more curious, they're more excited to learn. Uh, they can't wait to get back uh, to visit that country and other countries. Uh, and their head's a little bigger, a little difficult to get into the classroom sometimes. But um, so that that has been a uh, an invaluable extracurricular and and academic opportunity for our students. We're really proud of that. And of course, you know, I'm I'm a major proponent uh, in support of diversity. I think schools of architecture should reflect the world at large, not just the town that we grew up, the village and city. And so I have students from around the world, uh, uh, 65, actually 60 to 65% of my students are female. Very proud of that. And in, in uh, STEM institutions, engineering in particular, it's notoriously male, although RPI has made some great strides there. And I think they're up to 30% female, but I'm 60%. 
And I think that's that's really great, right? And we respect our differences, our uh, ethnic and gender and cultural differences, and we celebrate them. And of course, you know, there are advantages uh, on a professional level. Um, uh, I know for a fact that uh, many of our students who've entered into the study abroad program have in fact uh, made friends uh, during that semester away. And uh, this particular individual friend might uh, be a future partner in a firm, might be someone that would they'd keep in touch with to help them get a job in another country. So uh, once you open up this, this kind of larger international platform, uh, it has cascading uh, uh, effects, opportunities for you throughout your lifetime, right? Very, very proud of that. Um, I would also argue that uh, the School of Architecture at Rensselaer really believes, you know, if you heard me talk about a social project, uh, we believe in a community engagement. Uh, we see architecture as, a, as an activist field. It can do things to change the lives of people. We work with Habitat for Humanity. In fact, uh, we've had a, a studio where one of the students had a design project that they thought was so beautiful. Uh, it's now in construction documents and we're hoping within the next uh, six months to break ground. That means a student in my school has designed a house for a marginalized community, you know, a poor community, right? But the house is beautiful. Uh, it's gonna be well-built. It's gonna be uh, energy efficient. And once that gets built, I think this is gonna open up a whole door for the School of Architecture, our program to do more buildings with Habitat for Humanity. Um, you know, I could go into great detail. I, I've set up uh, collaborative relationships with a number of cultural institutions throughout New York State where our students get to propose design schemes for that institution so that they understand the power of design and the students get to see how architecture uh, can actually uh, affect others. And so it's been a, it's been a great experience over many years. We have internships available um, to our students in the, for the city of Chicago planning department. Uh, actually, all expenses paid. I've got uh, uh, sponsors, a lot of philanthropy in support of our students in my school that cover the expenses for this summer, up to five students can live in Chicago for free and learn about urban design. <clears throat> Uh, we also work with uh, uh, young students in Schenectady, middle schoolers that are trying to think about architecture, you know, as, as a very, very young person. And, and our students actually are teachers in that program uh, on the weekends, right? There are workshops. Um, uh, some of the research in our graduate research programs has, has uh, had an impact in other parts of the world. Uh, uh, coconut husks are usually thrown out in many uh, cultures around the world. And I've got graduate students in case that have figured out how to, as a byproduct, bring it back in as a modular component that they can actually build, uh, again, a kind of modular brick uh, out of a material that would typically be uh, put to waste. Right, so really exciting. And we've done installations even in, in uh, Ghana, Africa. Uh, and you know, last but not least, using architecture as a productive uh, tool for social change. The two images at the bottom of this slide are, is an exhibition in the Tang Museum uh, in New York State. Uh, a lot of our student work uh, is exhibited in museums and it's published in books. Uh, in the context of community engagement, we had a, this is pretty cool. We had an entrepreneur come to us. This is a plastic bottle that interlocks. And so the idea is it would carry a liquid. And at some moment when it was no longer being used, you know, like a soda can or a water bottle, you could actually build like a Lego brick, a structure. And he was interested in, he came to us and say, how about a disaster relief structure? So again, this is, there's a long story about this, but 
Uh, it's so interesting when you start thinking about ways to uh, move an idea into a drawing, into a model off the computer and go full scale and then say, can we help other people, right? Uh, this was that installation in, in Ghana, Africa. That's made out of uh, coconut husk, right? They were press mold in a steel mold and, and they have structural integrity. Um, you haven't come on campus uh, yet, but but we have one of the most amazing universities uh, uh, in the world. Um, when I started, uh, uh, Dr. Shirley Ann Jackson was the president and she was responsible for uh, putting this particular uh, building uh, into reality. It's called MPAC, the Experimental Medium Performing Arts Center. It's a $250 million building. All my lectures uh, are in this space and we've had international conferences. It's world-class. And I haven't seen another school of architecture in the United States that has a venue like this that allows the school to do as many things as we've been able to accomplish. Uh, Dr. Marty uh, Schmidt is the new president, started last summer. Uh, former MIT uh, provost, and in the short time he's been at RPI, uh, nothing less than transformative. So I can tell you that the leadership at the highest level of this institute is world class. Uh, the image on the right actually uh, is a photograph of one of the interior research rooms in this complex called MPAC, and it this is a, a, a structural frame that's being suspended by cables. Uh, and what opportunities are afforded with this? Well, if you had a 360 degree uh, panoramic screen, imagine you designed a building or a city and you wanted to walk into it. Uh, you could do that at MPAC. You could do that at RPI. And that we, that's called a cognitive immersive environment. So, uh, that's made available through this building. Um, I also want to call attention to the fact that I have an incredible uh, roster of diverse and internationally renowned faculty. It would take more time to tell you how good they are, but they are extraordinary. I spoke to you about the 75% of our students having a cultural immersion experience and 60% of the student body is female. Uh, just some school highlights. Uh, we've been ranked as high as 13th in the nation, um, but I would argue we're probably in the top three or four. Uh, uh, ranking schools of architecture are typically popularity contests, so if you have a bigger school, you'll have more alum uh, voting. Um, I've been uh, recognized as one of the top 25 architectural educators actually four times in the last nine years. So it's a collective project, but, but I do want to uh, call attention to the fact that there has, there's a lot of recognition here. The Bedford Chair is a, uh, an endowment that allows a world-class structural engineer to come to the school and work with civil engineering students and architecture students. So that's an example of our commitment to interdisciplinary collaboration. The Browns Traveling Fellowship, we give $5,000 to three students between their fourth and fifth year. They come up with a proposal to travel to certain parts of the world to, uh, in support of their interest in architecture. And if it's compelling, uh, it's a competitive process. They receive $5,000, they put that backpack on and, and off they go. And last but not least, when I spoke about the 360 degree panoramic screen. Uh, here's an image on the right of a space built with that technology at RPI. You're completely immersed in this environment. And the image on the left is the concert hall. It has at MPAC, it's a 360 degree uh, panoramic screen. And I believe this is maybe the last slide we have. I just want to uh, point out that uh, some of our alum have won the most prestigious awards you can win in the United States, uh, AIA firm awards and gold medals, very proud of them. Uh, I urge you to take a look at the uh, Influx book. You have the link to the flip book. You're not gonna find 
a book anywhere in the world like this. It's got maybe 2,000 images of student work. And, and if you just spend a good 20, 30 minutes, you'll realize how special that place is. All of our students have been placed in firms. So I told you before, our professional uh, career development network is extraordinary. And that alumni base is a part of a larger family. So I will stop sharing. And I am now, let's see, maybe we should match. Should we go over to the students? Yeah, shall we? Um, let's transition. And thank you for that, uh, Dean Douglas. That is a fantastic overview of the School of Architecture. Um, so, yeah, I think this would be a nice uh, switch of gears and maybe our student panelists um, can join us um, for the uh, their little introduction uh, to tell uh, our guests a little bit about themselves. And then we'll just go into a, a, a general question and answer for, for everybody. So um, I see Megan is uh, next to me on my screen. So Megan, if you can go first with a, a quick hello and introduction. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Hello, everybody. Uh, yeah, so I'm Megan. I'm Megan Adam. Um, I'm a fifth year architecture student in the BR program here. Um, I come from central New Jersey, so I'm a little around three, two, two hours, 45 minutes away from campus. Um, and I think coming to RPI has really been such a wonderful decision for me. I think Dean Douglas had a lot of great points with kind of coming in with a bit of an understanding, but kind of having that interdisciplinary collaboration, I think has been one of my favorite parts. Um, kind of beyond academics, I am involved in, um, we call it AIAS, so it's American Institute of Architecture Students. So that's our mentor mentee program. So I've been a mentee in that program since I've been a second year. So I've really enjoyed being able to do that. Um, kind of beyond academics, um, I've been involved in the Newman Catholic Fellowship on campus. So working a lot with um, our parish here and some of those other faith groups on campus has been uh, something else I've been interested in and have gotten more involved in. And I guess for me, I would say I've taken, being a fifth year, I've taken at this point, 10 different uh, studio projects. So I've had a lot of different perspectives and, and prompts, but I think my favorite project I've been working on is my, my final project, my thesis. Um, and I think it's a result of kind of discerning a lot of interests and kind of, uh, just fields I've, I've come to really know and understand. So um, those kind of greatest interests I have do lie within urban design and city and community planning. So I feel like those opportunities and courses I've had to investigate cultural implications and theory is, has been my favorite, my favorite aspect. Um, and I think last, I remember, uh, it's hard to believe it's been five years since I've kind of committed to RPI, but I think definitely uh, what made me decide to come here was I remember hearing hearing Dean Douglas speak and I think just that very nature of um, being open to learning, learning new things and uh, being able to encounter people of so many different backgrounds and demographics for me, I think was what really drew me to the school and uh, wanting to take these passions that I had developed for art, science and math to kind of merge all these in an institution such as RPI. Thank you, awesome. Megan. That was great. Appreciate it. Yeah, <laughs> thank you so much for that, Megan. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, kind of looking down on my screen, I think Natalie is next in, in my order. So Natalie, would you like to say hello? Um, hi, everybody. I'm Natalie. You'll have to excuse any background noise. I'm currently in the green building, which is the architecture building. I'm in my studio trying to prepare more for my final on Wednesday. But um, I'm a third year and I'm from Tennessee, so a little bit further from home. But um, I'm actually a transfer student, so I transferred in last year at the beginning of my second year, and um, I, not nothing was wrong with my previous school. I just uh, the architecture program was like five times the size that it is here, and it just felt really impersonal. And um, you know, I'm sure COVID had an effect on it as well. But actually, part of my journey coming to the school, I'm not sure if uh, Dean Douglas remembers this, but I actually gave him a phone call about this time. Uh, what would that be two year two years ago now and um, I had gotten in my freshman year but decided not to come and I gave him a call and was just had a had a very nice conversation with him about uh, potentially transferring in and like after that conversation I reapplied and got in and decided to come because it just set, seemed so much more personal than where I was um, and I've really enjoyed my time here you know even as a transfer student no problem making friends uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, 
really enjoy everyone around me and just such a such a nice environment to be in. Natalie, awesome. thank you. That's great. Thank you for that, Natalie. And next on my screen uh, in order, we have Niha. So uh, Niha, would you like to say hello? Hi, everyone. I'm sorry I was a little late. I was helping out a fellow classman. Uh, hi, guys. My name is Nihar. I'm a first year. Uh, I'm from New Jersey. So as opposed to Natalie, I'm quite close by. Um, I, I'll tell you why I came to RPI. RPI is actually much better than, uh, this is going to sound really bad. It's, gonna, it's much better than I originally thought it was. Um, obviously, you have your rankings and all of that. But I have a friend who goes to Virginia Tech, and he got into it. And I was looking at his work. And I compared it to RPI's work. And although Virginia Tech is ranked higher and they do very interesting stuff, we, we do much, much better work. And that's not to slander the school, but I think RPI has a much more direct approach. And it was kind of what I was looking for. And the opportunities that you have with a study abroad program, case, and internships, and just the like very um incorporated faculty student relationships it was something i was really looking forward to so that's why i came here thank you <laughs> thanks for that Niha. and uh finally we have uh nora who's joined us today uh nora would you like to say hello and give a, a quick introduction yes hi my name is nora wright i'm in between my fourth and fifth year i'm actually on my semester away right now um, I'm doing an internship right now away. Um, I'm from uh, the Southeast Coast. I'm from Georgia, um, but I currently live in the DMV. I live in Virginia mostly. Um, uh, some stuff that I'm involved in on campus, I'm a part of NOMAS, which is a national organization for minority architecture students. Um, and it's interesting that I'm part of NOMAS on campus because during my internship here, I've actually met up with um, the local NOMA, which is the National Organization of Minority Architects, um, the National NOMA chapter here. And just that pipeline from being part of this organization in school and being able to connect with these professionals outside of school, I appreciate it. Um, I'm also part of a couple cultural groups. I'm West African, so I'm part of the African Students Association on campus, and I've been on the e-board for that association as well. Um, why I chose RPI, I kind of came in a little bit blind. I hadn't been to the campus before. Um, I accepted the offer. I hadn't um, really gone to any of the meetings because, or like the things that were scheduled because I lived away from campus and it was pre-COVID. So like the whole virtual thing was a little bit um, less common, I guess. But I did notice that the architecture school was a lot smaller and I did want, I did appreciate the uh, ratio of students to professors. And I wanted to be able to build that, um, that personalized relationship with the people who I'm meant to be learning with. And I would appreciate it if I'm in the fifth year and my first year professor still remembers my name, which happens a lot at RPI. Um, so that's one thing that I knew coming in and turned out to be true. And um, I really appreciated that, so, yeah. Nora, thank you, that was wonderful. Yeah, thank you for that, Nora. Okay, so um, time for some uh, Q&A for Dean Douglas and our students. If you could use the chat box and uh, drop your questions in there, I'll do my best to kind of uh, filter them and uh, pass them on to our panelists. So if anybody would like to go ahead and ask the first question, um, hey, but hey. that would be awesome. But I also have some questions that people sent in advance, but we'll see if we have any um, immediate questions. Hey, Matt, uh, should we allow everyone just to open their camera? Be um, it's up to them. If people want to open their camera, that's OK. Uh, we are recording this. Um, yeah, it'd be great to see everyone. Feel free to okay, do thanks. so. But if you don't want to, that's fine, too. So we're here to, yeah, to ask any questions. Don't, don't. Every question is a good one, right? You want to take advantage of this opportunity this afternoon. Maybe, uh, Evan, if you could um, talk a little bit about um, the the ARCH program 
um, and the requirements that the students will do uh, to, to satisfy that? Yes. Um, so I don't know, it may, it may have been five, six, seven years ago, the, the entire Institute uh, launched an, an ARCH program and uh, the schedule and requirements were common through all five schools. Um, currently, we have migrated over to a slightly modified version, which is in the best interests of the School of Architecture. So I just, you're going to be hearing about the arch at the institute level, and then you're going to say, well, does that apply to the School of Architecture? And the answer is it does, but in a slightly different way. So at the institute level, uh, after the sophomore year, this is engineering, science, Lolly, which is the business school, humanities, arts, and social sciences. Four of the five schools, not architecture, after their sophomore spring semester, they stay on campus the entire summer. It's like a full semester uh, taking courses. And then they take e either the next fall or spring semester off. It's a, called a semester away in an internship or co-op. And the the uh, larger intention of this initiative was twofold. One was to um, challenge the students to to go somewhere to have a a professional experience associated with their discipline. Uh, hopefully, it it was away from home, and it was it might even be out of the country, and so they could get a multicultural experience, right? Um, and the a time away was was re relatively long. You could spend between four and seven months, let's say, in an internship co-op. Okay, architecture is a different uh, animal in the sense that you know there's an awful lot of effort that our students go through in a, uh, in a design culture, coming up with ideas and representing them and building models and drawings and objects at all different scales and so forth. So it it's really important at the end of a semester to have a break. And I think the Institute uh, acknowledged uh, that was something that was critical for architecture, but we were already offering our study abroad program with again, 75% of the students taking that. So that whole cultural immersion priority was more or less satisfied by the students who spent a semester away, India, Italy, China, Latin America. So in the School of Architecture, after your sophomore spring semester, you go away like you do every summer. You don't have to stay on campus, all right? Um, we urge students to enter into the study abroad program and the Case New York program, right? A full semester in Brooklyn with the graduate students. If you do either one of those, the only other obligation you have, and it's a piece of cake, is during your four, four or five year period at RPI in the School of Architecture, you have to have an internship, one internship. So you can go to Italy for one semester, and then one semester over the summer, you get an internship. Most of our students are working for architecture firms uh, from one year to the next. So this is low hanging fruit, not complicated. If they go to case for a full semester, you got to do one internship. If for some reason they do not enter into the study abroad program or a case, and there are exceptions, there are students who, for whatever reason, choose not to do that might, might be financial. Um, although we do provide financial support to students who want to do the study abroad program. Uh, they just have to fulfill two internships in the summer. So it's, it, you know, it's relatively uh, easy, accessible. It still gives you, uh, unlike the, the way Arch has played out with the other schools, it gives you an enormous amount of flexibility and, and you get to control what you do in the summer right away from RPI. That's really, really important. So that's that's the arch. And hopefully for anyone who was a little confused about, well, what are you guys doing? Uh, that's what we're doing. Um, uh, Nora was in the earlier model 
where, right, which was similar to the rest of the other four schools. And we've transitioned over this fall to the new model. Uh, but I'm sure Nora had a fantastic experience uh, on that internship semester way. Um, I, our, our students make the most of whatever they're confronted with. So, okay. So Matt, we think we got that one down. We've checked that box. Are there other questions for either myself or? Yeah. Austin? So uh, one of our attendees here, uh, Julian asked, and I, I'll, I'll quote this. I recently went to one of the RPI accepted student celebrations and the presenter stated that going for a master's degree in architecture after going through the five-year B-Arch program was not necessary since the program prepares you at a high enough level going into the workforce compared to other students from other universities who do have a master's degree. And would you agree with that? Okay, good, very good question. So, uh, and I, I, at the uh, in-person on-campus open houses, we have a lot more time, so I'm able to go into this in great detail. Um, think of it this way, there are two profiles of students who, who will enter into architecture. Uh, one is, a, is someone who's 17 years old, which 17, 18 years old, those that are attending this event. And you know in high school, your junior year in high school, I, I, I want to pursue architecture in college. So you apply to a school of architecture with a B arch degree, a bachelor's of architecture degree, it's five years. And, and that's the program that I entered uh, when I was your age. Five years to study architecture, it's wonderful, right? There are a number of students throughout the United States who do not know when they about to graduate high school, that they want to be an architect or a doctor or an engineer, they actually do not know what they want to do for the rest of their life. And that's okay too. Everyone figures things out differently in the world and in a different time. So they'll often uh, go to a college, a liberal arts college, get a four-year degree. And at some point during those four years, they'll wake up one morning and go, you know, I think architecture is my calling. That's what I want to do. I figured it out. So they have to finish their four-year degree and apply to a graduate program called an MArch program versus a BArch program. And an MArch program is an accelerated architecture degree between three and three and a half years. Okay. Half of the students in the United States that are practicing architects have a BArch degree. And they have their own firms and they're leaders in the world, right? It, having a B-Arch degree has absolutely, you can do everything you need to do as a practitioner. And then the other half are those that figured it out later in life, wanted to be an architect, and they went through that accelerated program. By the way, we have both programs in our school, but at Rensselaer, the B-Arch program is huge. I mean, in the sense it's, you know, 280, 300 students versus 20 in the MArch program. So uh, we do have students who enter into that graduate program. All right, both of those programs allow you to become a practicing architect. One is not better than the other, but the five-year degree is wonderful. If you know who you wanna be, what you wanna study early on in your life, you are doing the absolute right thing. Now, why would you get a graduate degree in anything now that you have a B arch degree, because you there's something called added knowledge. At some point, you know, during your five years, you may say, you know, I would love to get a graduate degree in civil engineering. So I have a little bit more knowledge about structural engineering or computer science or architectural lighting, architectural acoustics, or the built ecologies, right? Or business. So at RPI, we call it a co-terminal degree. You can actually stay on campus for one to two years and get a master's on top of your B-Arch degree. You leave the university with two degrees. Uh, it's a competitive world out there. There are advantages having two degrees. You don't have to do it, but you may want to do it, right? That's the difference. Now, I'm a, uh, a professional architect. 
I'm also an educator, right? And I have a tenured position at RPI as a faculty member. In order to get that tenured position, I have to have a master's degree, right? So there are some architects who want to practice and teach, which means they've got to get that second degree, okay? Uh, we do have something called an MS Arch. It's a one-year post-professional degree program. It's probably the fastest way to, to get your graduate degree uh, at Rensselaer. And so you could do the, the B Arch, five years plus the MS Arch. Happens to be located a case in New York City. So you could live in New York City and get your graduate degree. So hopefully, and that's a long way of saying uh, you have chosen a perfect path and you're set up to become a practicing architect. As you move through this academic experience, you will change. Uh, certain things you weren't aware of may become more interesting. And not everyone does it, but some of our students decide they want to get a second degree and we'll support them in any way we can. Okay. Okay, thank you for that, Evan. Um, next question, is there any data on how students do on the National licensing exam on the uh, National Architectural Accrediting Board exam. Yeah, no, that's a good question. I, I don't have that data in front of me. Uh, um, I do believe the last time I saw something, uh, our st well, first of all, let, let's back up. Uh, we prepare our students to become practicing architects which means that the entire curriculum is structured in such a way that our students just have to go an internship for a few years in a firm and they can take the test, all right? So there's a, there's a, a, a pipeline that's very, very smooth. I don't have the data on how well we do, but I, I, I believe the last time I saw it, it was quite, quite impressive. It really was, and there were, uh, areas in particular in terms of building technology that our students excel in. So um, when you look at that influx book and you'll go, oh my God, the design work in that school is off the charts crazy. I, uh, can I also assume that they know how buildings are put together? And the answer is they know how buildings are put together really, really well. They take it very, very seriously. So um, this is a long-term journey you know i use the analogy uh, uh, a gymnast peaks at the age of 12 years old and then they have to figure out another profession an architect can be doing some of their best work in their 70s and 80s and 90s right so how beautiful it is right you just every year you learn more you you become that much more knowledgeable and confident your network uh, both in school and out and 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 beyond rpi expands and assuming, you know, you would, not everyone wants to run their own firm, but certainly many of our graduates uh, uh, have been very successful in terms of becoming founders and principals of firms, right? So no rush. Uh, I would even argue that after you uh, leave RPI, you want to associate yourself with top firms because the internship, learning how to put buildings together, contracts, client relationships, the whole thing. It takes a number of years. You just you be patient. It, absolutely be patient. Everything falls into place. Uh, and before you know it, you know, you're, you're, you're on the cover of Time Magazine and mm -hmm. Architectural Record, and people are calling you up, asking you to design their house, right, and their museum. So um, the most important thing you should worry about right now is the selection of the architecture school right? What, what's going to inspire you and allow you to reach your potential? That's your, that's your priority. I, I wouldn't worry too much about the profession too early. Okay. We've got, thank you for that, Evan. We've got quite a few more questions coming in. Um, so is it possible for students to do both uh, the case center for architecture, science, and ecology and study abroad? Yeah. yeah yes. And, and, and they, they, they have to excel that that's quite a, um, that's a challenge in the sense because they have to fulfill all their courses uh, on campus. But the answer is yes. 
And now that we've moved over to this uh, modified uh, ARCH model, I think we'll be able to have more students do both. Okay. Um, I learned about the co-terminal program, and this is applicable for the B ARCH program. And what, uh, what are the typical masters that is, uh, students pursue after doing the uh, M, uh, sorry, the B ARCH? Well, that I mentioned that's a, a similar question to the one I uh, was asked before, right? You can you can get your B arch and you can get your master's in lighting, your B arch, your master's in architectural acoustics, in built ecologies, a case in civil engineering, right? In biz in business MBA, it goes. There, in other words, you can take your second graduate degree could come from any of the department and schools at RPI. You're not. There's no pigeonhole here, a lot, a lot of flexibility. And you don't need to know that when you enter into the school, there's no rush. There's no rush. You don't, we, we, uh, we, we want that transition to be exciting and empowering, right? So we don't wanna overwhelm you with too many things right away. Um, I will say uh, some of the, the non-architecture questions, I'm actually gonna email the students after this with answers, but I want to do the architecture questions now while we have the, the panel and the, the, the Dean of the school. So maybe Megan, um, being a, a fifth year, can you talk about the studio culture at RPI? Um, that, I think that was one of the a good questions from Sebastian. Sure, yeah, yeah, exactly too. And um, right, being in the program for five years, I've definitely been exposed to studio and right it's just part of it's second nature at this point but I think from from very early on from my my very first semester I think Dean Douglas had mentioned it during the the presentation where um, being a part of the architecture school and your cohort in particular of your same first year students these are the people that you're spending so much of your time with particularly in studio you'll spend majority of your time there and you know a lot of new things to learn with technologies with um, someone like me who had never used a uh, laser cutter before I didn't know what an exacto knife was to kind of cut and, and make my model so I feel definitely that some, something that I always speak about when people kind of ask me about school is is the studio culture itself I definitely um, I believe this this space and in our school it's on the, the fourth floor it's a big open space so you're constantly working with and seeing the work of um, people in your own section but also everyone else in your program and I feel like that is just such a great way to be able to learn from other people to ask questions I feel like coming into college it was something I didn't really do or maybe wasn't as comfortable with at first saying hey I don't really understand this can you kind of help me I know we have the same assignment for digital constructs too. So I feel like the studio culture gets you more comfortable with talking to people around you, um, asking for questions. And my closest friends have definitely come from, from architecture. I, my three other roommates are in the same cohort as me. We, we met during first year, we worked in a, a class together in a group and uh, they definitely have been the most consistent friends that I have. So I feel like that is something that's established first year and especially as you get to know people more um, it carries through even as you go through second and um, third and fourth year with your comprehensive design studios and kind of being at the point where I'm at now with uh, with final project and thesis review that same bond has still um, definitely still resonated and still exists you want to go and see everybody else's work so that's something I'm looking forward to doing tomorrow when the the other my other classmates start their thesis reviews cool uh, Natalie, do you want to add anything? I, I think you're actually in one of our studios right now, correct? Uh, yes, I'm in the on the third floor studio. Um, our our final is on Wednesday, so we're all preparing. But yes, yeah, studio culture is great because there's a lot of things that are maybe simple that you're not really like the professors don't straight up spell out for you. But um, so at least one person in the studio usually knows how to do it or what's going on. Just either from learning it themselves or some previous class. Uh, so it's always really nice to be in studio and talk to uh, the your classmates. And yeah, I mean, I've made a lot of great friends. I make a lot of great friends every year uh, in studio, but um, um, RPI also has this uh, really good opportunity called Vertical Studios, which you can take during your third, fourth, and fifth year. And it's a mix of all the third, fourth, and fifth year cohorts. So I'm not just friends with people in my cohort, I'm friends with fifth years and fourth years and 
Um, honestly, since I'm a transfer student, I'm kind of behind in my credits. So I'm friends with freshmen and second years as well, just from being around them. But yeah, the School of Architecture is very, uh, you know, friendly, connected. Everyone wants to talk to each other and pick each other's brains about your projects. Awesome. Thanks, Natalie. N Niha, as a first year student, how would you describe the, the studio culture, especially amongst that, that cohort of incoming students this year? Yeah, so um, I found that compared to the upperclassmen that I've talked with, our studio is actually a much more tight-knit community. Like, everyone worries about the competitiveness, and while that does exist here, it's much more, like, unified space. Uh, I know Megan was talking about that the fourth floor is a big open space. I'm sitting in it right now, and it is a long, I'd say, maybe 100 feet long, and there's usually just people on people, and you can always find someone... Like, you may not know a lot of people, but everyone just goes up to anyone, starts talking about anything, could be related to the work you're doing, could be a question of something you don't know, or it could just be just, hey, how are you doing? Um, and honestly, I really love it. It's, I've met so many random people that I honestly never would have expected I would have ever talked to. And it's, uh, it's a great experience. I honestly, like, I had my final. Um, two weeks ago, and I'm still here, which is uh, kind of sad, but it's, uh, to me, I enjoy it, and my mom says I should get a life, but in my defense, I'm, I'm focused on my work, and my friends, they all understand my struggles, and they do the best they can to help me out, and that's why I think studio is just one of the, and it's not just a great class, but it's just the space in itself is a great environment. That's awesome. Thanks, Niha. And, uh, and finally, Nora, would you just like to tell us a little bit about your experience of, of studio culture? Um, yeah, I mean, without uh, echoing too much what the rest of the panel has said, um, studio culture is one thing for, you know, being in the green building with all these other architecture students. One thing I love about the green building that I haven't really noticed in other buildings and other schools on campus is the fact that like if we have a group project, there's always a space for us to go to and sit and meet and work on that group project together. And it doesn't have to be you bonding with just the students um, in like uh, Natalie said, just the students in your cohort. Um, but I took a, when I was taking my DD studio, I'm pretty sure Megan was also in that cohort and I got to meet her and I got to meet some of her friends as well. And I, my first year was interrupted unfortunately by COVID. So I hadn't really had the foundational, you know, meeting of students in other years. And I think the vertical studios kind of created, facilitated those, um, connections that there's a lot you can learn from the people who have come before you and there's a lot you can learn from the people who are coming after you and there's a lot you can teach both ways as well and I think that the green building is a great facilitator for that so um not to be biased but it is kind of my favorite building on campus <laughs> yeah that's awesome that's a really great answer Nora I really appreciate that um, some of the, the previous questions um that were sent in before what architecture clubs are there on campus? Can one of the, the students respond? Um, yeah, I was gonna say, um, I know just the more, the general overview, there's the AIAS, so the American Institute of Architecture students, um, kind of more open to, to everyone too. And I know in coming first years, they'll have, uh, they'll be assigned a mentor. And so that's within the umbrella that that, that program runs to and everybody else kind of feel free to, um, insert or say if, if, any, if I forget anything too um that's that's kind of that's one of our main ones and then the other one which Nora was saying she's a part of too is NOMAS the National Organization for Minority Architecture Students so those are um those are the larger kind of two um, umbrellas I know it was something that was here on campus when when I was a first and second year and I believe it might be coming back but it was also it was called canstruction um I'm not sure if that that's coming back to but another way for students of all years to work with different kinds of media and to apply kind of what we learn in studio and other interests too to kind of challenge different um, scopes of like what's what's architecture what's assembly so I'm not sure if construction still exists <laughs> in my <laughs> Dean Douglas can probably answer that yeah I, just a quick thing on that uh, so the, these were um, uh, relatively large 
structures, you know, they could go up to 10, 12 feet in the air, all made out of cans, right? Mm -hmm. Empty cans, of course. And uh, there were programs that competed in the Northeast for the most kind of innovative and ingenious architectural uh, structure. Uh, COVID kind of created some uh, discontinuity, but uh, interesting enough, Megan, I the the individual who's overseeing the kind of Northeast chapter invited me to serve on the jury. So I think this Wednesday morning, I'm going to be going to cross uh, with the, 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 the mall uh, to, to review a series of, of pavilions, but we're, we're probably going to get back uh, in the game uh, next year. Okay. Um, but there's a, I mean, there's a lot of other student organizations uh, at the institute level so that students in the School of Architecture, in addition to NOMIS and AIAS, they can join other clubs as well. And they can also play sports, uh, organize sports. We, we uh, uh, support any of our students who are uh, um, student uh, scholar athletes, and they just have to be conscious of time management. But there's a lot going on at the institute level. So if you're trying to get a sense of what, what would it be like to be at RPI. Certainly you've got this incredible family of uh, fellow architectural colleague, student colleagues in the green building, but you also have, uh, there's another uh, 5,500 students uh, outside uh, in the other schools that you have access to. And we urge the students to, to make friends and establish relationships at that level as well. Yeah, awesome. There are over 200 clubs, as uh, Evan said, on campus. So really is something for everybody. Um, okay, a student was asking about advice on a laptop for architecture students. Um, obviously there's many different types of laptops out there. I see Neha just raised his hand because he probably went through this uh, less than a year ago. So thanks Neha, if you could give uh, some advice. Yeah, so um, I'm on something called the Dean's Advisory Council, like you get a couple representatives from each uh, each year that meet with the Dean once or twice a semester. And this is something I just brought up because obviously, uh, if you look on the school's website, they offer uh, two uh, computer packages. And uh, one of them is, uh, I think it's the Lenovo something, it's about like 2700. And that's what most of the people, uh, most people in the school got, and not just, I don't mean the architecture school, but just the general school. And from my experience, it's garbage. Um, no one seems to have it working well for them. I know last semester for our studio, we had to do a lot of big renderings. And the, the people in my studio who had a different computer, like myself, we were working fine, but every one of the school computers there just kept crashing. So I'm trying to work on maybe with the people on the architect website to kind of give recommendations. But one thing I definitely recommend is looking, you can generally like look online, you can find, find them, but I'd say a good place to look is Dell. Like I have the Dell XPS 15 that, and it runs completely fine. It's a, I want to say it's around two grand, maybe a little less depending on like the things you change, like memory size, storage, but that's up to your personalization. But I recommend think, like looking at Dell computers. Um, another thing is gaming computers. Um, you may think it's a bit odd, but I know I know I, I'm ho hopefully going to get one within the next year or so. But a lot of the upper class can have them because they should, the process power it gives is just so much better. It runs our programs better, and you have less likely of a chance of crashing, losing your work, or anything like that. So maybe I. Question. Go ahead. Just go feel ahead. free to reach out to me, and I'm happy. And Sorry. I'm happy to just give you some ideas. Who Sorry wanted... to interrupt you, Dean Douglas. I just go wanted ahead. to go ahead. You go ahead. Go ahead. Support what Nihar said about the gaming computer. I have a gaming computer, um, but also I think coming in, obviously there are financial re reasons why you may go for a cheaper computer. Um, I had a different computer in my first and second year, and I used the computer lab a lot um, because the uh, PPUs there can kind of run stuff a lot faster than my computer could. And so there's things that are out of our control and our personal computers may not be able to adapt to that, but luckily RPI and the School of Architecture does have the, the computer lab as a backup if you need to run 
uh, rendering on there while you're working on a drawing on your personal computer, you can always do that. And the Green Building has that available for you. But if it is within your budget, I would definitely look at a higher processing power if you want to be able to just get your stuff done while you're at home and you don't want to have to walk to the Green Building. Uh, but yeah, I want to buttress the gaming computer thing. It sounds weird, but it's it's a good investment, I think. And I just want to jump in here real quick and say, um, you and Nora was talking about the price and like, I definitely understand that. The reason I brought up the price of the school laptop is because I think it's completely overpriced and you don't need most of the things that it gives you. And you usually find like cheaper gaming computers online for maybe a good like $700 less. So. Hey, uh, Natalie or Megan, do you want anything about uh, laptops or the computer lab? I would just agree, like gaming computers, I know it sounds weird, but also get like um, something with a lot of storage if it's possible, or just like a backup store of drive. Like I have like two gigs left on my computer right now and it's, uh, I I'm I'm, need to download all my files, but um, I would also suggest like, if you can get a good computer now, it's better to get one your freshman year to carry you through. Cause I switched um, my computer halfway through my second year and like, it's just a pain in the neck to re-download all the software that we need, but it, it's possible. Like I did it. And um, yeah, I would check Costco. That's where I got my gaming computer. And honestly, it was pretty cheap compared to what some of my classmates spent for computers that don't have the processing power that mine does. Yeah, um, I think a lot of the, the comments sort of said before were pretty good and, and helpful. I think um, the computer I've had, and it's the one I got my first year, it's the Dell, it's the XPS 15, I think it's the 9570, but that was the one that was, when it first came to RPI, it was recommended for architecture students. So I've had this computer all five years. Um, Throughout the time, I did have to have the battery replaced one time, um, but I've also used the, the computing center we have on campus to kind of just get it cleaned out a little bit from all the, the dust. Um, I definitely agree with having, um, being conscientious of, of storage because things do accumulate over time. So having an external hard drive is great for that. But later on to um, into my fourth and fifth year, I invested in a, a desktop. So that actually stays in my apartment. So I do um, higher scale renderings on that computer. So it's all, great. it kind of depends on a lot of different factors, model and cost of course is a, a super important thing to consider. Maybe it's not always in the, the scale or the sense, but right, I think we have good resources with the computing center to help you to be able to clean out. And if your computer's processing a bit slow, I would recommend that, but yeah. Okay, I, I know there's one other question I wanna to get to in a second, because it sounds like they want clarification. Um, this is a much longer discussion about uh, laptops and desktops. I just want you to know that that there we have an IT director in the school uh, that's available to the students 24-7. Uh, we have students, most of the students have PCs, but there are some with Macs. There is a- uh, Your question is gone. I'm sorry. What did he say? Oh, we've got someone. Who has so I think one. Ernest was, was trying to add something there. Ernest, if you can type the, the question into the, the chat box. Um, that'd be awesome. Thanks, Ernest. Yeah, so uh, things are moving at at, uh, at high speed. So uh, is it possible that you'll, you'll get equipment when you first come in and it has to evolve and change and be accessorized with desktops and, and so forth? Of course, the most, the big takeaway here is we're here to support you. Your computers matter. Uh, it's an extension of of who you are, and it, and as mentioned, uh, if it's operating uh, effectively and a high speed, you'll be able to get your work done quicker. So we're we're here to support you. Um, the case study abroad program is pretty straightforward. You know, if if you have a 3.0 and you're doing well in your studies, then you're eligible to apply for these programs. And most of our students are getting 3.0 and higher. Um, and uh, in their second year, they will be able to work with their faculty advisors to identify what their options are. Because, for example, Italy 
uh, this past year was available uh, for students to go away in the fall and in the spring they were going to Latin America. So you, you have to kind of figure out what your first and second choice is and depending on uh, available seats because they can be competitive. Um, if you plan uh, well in advance, most likely the students will get their first choice, right? But given the fact we have so many offerings uh, and so many students enroll, certainly uh, pre-COVID and post-COVID, uh, there's there's a lot of freedom here. And, and wherever you end up in the world, I assure you, it'll be an incredibly transformative experience for you. Okay, uh, so just to uh, repeat uh, the questions about um, about transfer credit AP classes, we had some earlier questions sent in about counseling and, and tutoring. I'm going to reply to all of the students, the attendees with those answers. Um, but um, and also Ernest will uh, we'll connect you with uh, an advisor as well about your your question about uh, an architecture certificate. Uh, but I guess we're kind of getting towards the end of the kind of the, the, the time that I thought that we would need. But uh, are there any other final questions for our students and for Evan Douglas, the, the dean? Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll say final uh, comments, Matt. Uh, first, yeah. I, want, I want to thank uh, the students in the School of Architecture who have taken time out of their busy schedule to join us. I really appreciate it. Uh, I, I'm always impressed by uh, your commitment and and uh, your attention to the school a, as a community, and and I think this sends a, a really great message for for those prospective students online today that are trying to get a sense of the culture uh, that we have, and it's a team sport, faculty, staff, and students. Um, and then final comments to the to the prospective students that are online right now. Thank you for uh, taking time out. I, th I hope it was informative and and uh, it resonated with you, uh, the, both the presentation and the uh, Q&A. Uh, as I uh, mentioned in the beginning of, of uh, you know, this online event, I know it's a big decision and uh, I, I hope we've been able to adequately communicate to you what is so unique about Rensselaer School of Architecture um, and why it would be such an exciting uh, experience and opportunity to come uh, study uh, architecture here. Uh, I believe that all of you have been contacted, received an email from me, so you have my email address. You're welcome to contact me in the coming days ahead. Uh, I know there's, there's a few more weeks before there's a deadline uh, at RPI and schools around the country. But yeah, if you if you need to get some more information from the dean, I will make myself available. Okay, so thank you and and have a, a wonderful uh, end of semester time in your own high school and all the best to the finish line making that final decision. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Dean Douglas, for joining us tonight. Thank you to our awesome panel of current students for giving us your, your valuable time while you're working, while you're studying. You've got finals around the corner. And here you are, you know, reaching out to our incoming class uh, for this fall. So that's fantastic. And obviously, thank you so much to the students for joining us from California and Texas and Maryland and uh, all over the Northeast as well. Um, I dropped my email address into the chat box. Uh, you can also reach us at admissions at rpi.edu. Um, I put in some links there as well uh, for the catalog listing for architecture. One of the earlier questions was about the curriculum. Um, and we will be putting this recording up on our YouTube channel, which is RPI Admissions. I would imagine in a couple of days, uh, give us a, a little time to get that established. But um, once again, thank you so much. Reach out if there are any questions that we can help you with and enjoy the rest of your day. Have a great night, everybody. Yeah, thanks everyone. Thank you, thank appreciate you. it. Bye, everyone.